Election Day is almost here. Tuesday will have a much better picture of what Kansas City will look like in the years to come. Jackson County voters will decide an issue the Kansas City Royals hoped would be a home run, the renewal of a stadium sales tax. You already pay three-eighths of a cent for every dollar spent in Jackson County. A yes vote replaces the current tax with a new one for the same amount and keeps it in place through 2064, so the next 40 years. The billions of dollars generated from the renewal would be split between the Royals and Chiefs. Chiefs want to work on renovations and maintenance at Arrowhead. The Royals pitched their plan to use the money to help build a new ballpark. Admittedly, the team threw the community a curveball, adding a third and final location into the mix at the last minute last month. The Royals now have their sights set on the Kansas City crossroads and have made a big push with the Chiefs to convince voters to give the green light. But it's not without controversy, especially for the people who live and work there, who in February told us they'd either been approached by the team just one day before the announcement or not at all. The whole thing is so last minute, it's crazy. We should have had lots of time to talk about this and, and figure it out. The fact that we learned that we were in a demolition zone from a press conference by billionaires, um, they claim that they're making good with tenants with CBA agreements, that is absolutely false. In the weeks since, the Royals say they've made efforts to talk to and hear from interested parties in the crossroads. And just last week, they even changed some of the proposed borders of their development plans to try to keep more businesses open. Mr. Sherman, you can't hide! We can see your green, sir! Still, several community groups have voiced their problems with the overall plan. A number of community leaders believe the development would push rents higher and could create long-term poverty wage jobs. They had a choice to earn our votes by meeting our common sense demands at the county table and at our private table with them. And they failed time and time again. To a team that claims to do a whole lot of listening, get ready to hear us loud and clear on April 2nd. The groups pushed for supportive community benefits agreements from both the Royals and Chiefs, pointing to deals made in other cities like what Milwaukee did with the Bucks, deals that put money back into our community. And they waited until this past Monday, eight days before the election, for those agreements to make it to the county. Here they are in black and white. The Royals pledged to give $140 million, and the Chiefs would give $126 million over 40 years. That money would go toward helping a number of community issues, including affordable housing, public transportation, and job training. The teams also promised minority and women-owned companies would get up to 43% of the business generated during and after the building of a new stadium. The Royals called the deals historic. A number of community groups still aren't satisfied. Meanwhile, a number of local chambers of commerce and union groups support plans for a new ballpark, including the union representing service workers who work at Kauffman Stadium now. Objectively, this is a big ask of taxpayers, and there's a lot to talk about. I sat down with Royals Chairman and CEO John Sherman on the heels of what, either way, will be an historic vote for Kansas City. Well, thanks for having us. You originally planned to announce a location in September. The Royals Correct. pushed back that deadline, Correct. and then the crossroads kind of appeared to the public in Correct. February. What was going on behind the scenes, and, and why the delay? You know, that was a self-imposed deadline, and really just trying to get this thing moving more quickly. And un and unfortunately, we couldn't until we had a real deadline, which was really uh, you know around Jackson County dealing with the uh, Jackson County executive. We just we weren't get getting anywhere dealing with the executive, so we had to wait until we had to go straight to the legislature. We had to go, and then ultimately uh, they voted eight to one against his recommendation to put it on the ballot, and then we had to override a veto. When I say we, the legislature override. So so during that period of time. Um, you know, some that, that delay, uh, there were some really good ideas, some interesting and creative ideas that bubbled up, and the crossroads in particular. I really always thought that that would be the best place, you know, with uh, everything being equal, that would be the greatest place to put the ballpark, take advantage of our existing assets right in the heart of it, you know, in the neighborhood, connecting Fire and Light downtown to the crossroads, uh, to 18th and Vine, to Hospital Hill, and really take really right there in the cultural center of the city, really where, to me, where baseball should be. It should be in a neighborhood that takes advantage of the, of the vibrancy and energy of the city and brings more to that central location. Are you satisfied with the way the rollout played out? Just o overall with the, the deadlines and, and behind well, the you scenes know, friction? You know, these, are, these are hard processes. They always are. Um, there were some things that I wish we would have done differently, but more importantly, I, I, I wish we could have communicated this at an earlier point in time, particularly as it relates to the Crossroads neighborhood. When we got to that site selection, I wish we could have been there earlier and had more time, but we weren't, but wanted to focus in, 
partnering with the Chiefs as well. The Chiefs had some objectives, and, and so we decided to go for it here in uh, 24. If this passes, what's your plan for uh, business owners, people who live in the crossroads who would be displaced by this? As it relates to the business owners that would be displaced, we're talking to them right now about what are the, to just trying to analyze their individual situations. Where are you in your lease, you know, if it is a lease? Uh, you know, what have, what is, what's your investment that you made that maybe won't be replaced and then what type of temporary transition expenses and, and, and relocation expenses. We're, we're working very hard to make sure that we keep them whole and, and uh, want to work with them whether they want to maybe stay in the crossroads, go somewhere else. And then of even with the owners, the owners of the buildings that have tenants, um, you know, they have legal uh, documents between them, but we want to make sure that they take care of those tenants in the rent. So we're not really just relying on the property owners who want to sell because uh, we're very sensitive to uh, protecting the the, uh, the displaced businesses. And, and we think it's a pretty short list, you know, certainly in the footprint, but then in that we've agreed to kind of look at uh, two blocks to the east, two blocks to the west, and two blocks to the south, that businesses could be impacted, if nothing else, by construction, but certainly at least temporarily, if not, if it doesn't fit them, you know, right up next to the ballpark. Why should taxpayers foot the bill for your project? Well, this is about a partnership. I mean, it's a very, it's a valid question, certainly, but, but, and, and we're looking for a partner. We're, we're going to be bringing substantial uh, capital. We'll, we'll bring the bulk of the capital when you think about the stadium and the district. But this is about a public-private partnership, one that's served this community well for 52 years, and we, we really want to build on that. I, when we acquired the team in 2019, I, I knew that this was going to be the most important thing we would do while we're stewards of the franchise. This is about keeping this franchise, the Chiefs are with us on that, keeping these franchises here, sustaining ourselves as a major league city. And if we get this done, uh, the Royals will cross the century mark, you know, 40 years from now. And that's a big deal, for, particularly for a market like this. Let's talk about the future. There's this implication that if this fails on Tuesday, that the Royals and Chiefs are, are looking at all options. If this vote fails, will the Royals leave Kansas City? Well, you know, here, here's how I'd answer that. This is my hometown. We we're working really, really hard to keep this team in Jackson County and Kansas City. I've got my head down trying to get this across the finish line next Tuesday. I believe that we'll win. I believe that the citizens will make that decision. If, if, if we get another answer, uh, we'll, we'll consider all of our options. But, but um, Does that mean leaving the market potentially? That's, that's not on my radar at all, and I've never said that. I'm, we are trying to stay in Kansas City, and first and foremost, Jackson County and Kansas City, Missouri. We'll deal with the feedback that we get from our, the citizens, but we're the Kansas City Royals, and we plan to be the Kansas City Royals for a long time. Would you still fight to keep the Royals in town? I'm going to fight till uh, I get told. Um, I mean, you know, I, I, the, the, if we get the feedback, here that, that they don't want us in, that are that the community doesn't want us in Jackson County. We've got to look, look at all, all of our options. Certainly some of those uh, are certainly in the area. Do you take a no vote as thinking that voters don't want you in Jackson County? They might still want you in Jackson County, but not want to pay the tax. Yeah, you know, that could be, but I think this is a, this is an existing tax. We're going to take money that's used to maintain two aging stadiums and do something really special for Kansas City. I hope that they vote yes on that, and we're going to work really hard. Uh, I've been knocking on doors, going to union meetings, going to east side churches, and I think I understand where we are. I think there are some things I wish we'd have done differently, but can't, can't go back and do that. But we're doing all we can over the next week to get this across the finish line. And I think it's a good deal for Kansas City. And I think, I, give us a chance to do something special for Kansas City. And I think you'll be, I think the taxpayers will be really happy about that. John Sherman, thank you very much. Thank you, Cody. Appreciate the time.